Hey, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some steps for improving glute pain and hip pain. You might have actually been doing a lot of this strength work, but it's not outweighing the amount of running that you're doing. Hopefully these moves will help you. This is designed to be repeated over a few cycles. However, if you've got time for just one circuit of these glute moves, then that'll still be better than nothing. So join me right now on your mat. Loads of these moves are gonna be familiar to you, but the important thing here is that we have a sequence that we're gonna drive through and we're gonna complete every single exercise. So the first one we're gonna do is your glute bridge. So feet in line with your shoulders, place your hands across your chest, lift those hips and go for that straight line from knee to shoulders. We don't wanna be up here, we don't wanna be down here. Nice straight line, hold it with me right now. Actively thinking about tensing your glutes here. Three, two, one, and relax, cool. Lift your toes, we're gonna hip thrust now. Up and down. Just driving through your heels. Get to straight, don't arch. Do two more. Excellent, sit yourself up. Place your hands either side of your hips and take those feet now wider than the width of your mat and we're gonna knee drop. We're focusing on the leg that comes to the middle on every single repetition. So just in that position there, no need to force anything. Every time we move, we're just taking a little bit of momentum, trying to get a little bit further every single rep. That's it, so I'm driving that knee just down towards the mat. We notice that many issues occur from poor internal rotation. So that's that position there, that's the poorer weakness that can lead to some glute and hip pain. As runners and as everyday Joe Public, sedentary, sat down in a seat. Let's go 10 more seconds. Three, two, one. Awesome. So now we're gonna move on to a clamshell position. Now, loads of you know I love clamshells. And we perform a lot of them just like this. There is a better progression if you're struggling with a bit of hip, glutes, or groin pain even. And that's actually rising up into a knee-based side plank just like this, and then performing your clam. So let's go for 10 reps here, off we go. Five, keep your eyes on that forearm. Eight, nine, 10. And that's the tempo you wanna be aiming for. Let's go to the other side. So into your clam position, knees together, lift your hips. Hand on the side, off you go, one. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Let's come to sideline adductors or Jane Fonders, as many of you know I like to call them. We're going to make sure we place that hand still on the side of our hip, eyes on the forearm. As we lift that leg, I want you to turn the toes down towards the floor. So we're coming up and down here. One, two, going for 10 reps. Five, seven, eight, nine, 10. Good, let's go to the other side. Right on your hip, not rolling backwards, not down here. Right on your hip, eyes on that forearm. 10 reps, let's go. Try and point your toes down to the floor. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Awesome. 
we're going to move into a side plank. We're familiar with this. It's a standard side plank, there's nothing special. You can place your feet just like I have there, or on top of one another. Three, two, one. Lift those hips, arm goes up, 20 second hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, relax, go to the other side. Another side plank, we're really thinking about. <coughs> Another side plank, we're really thinking about this middle trunk section, not necessarily our abs. Three, two, one, up we go. Halfway. Four, three, two, one. Excellent, relax. So this one's an isometric, um, kind of like an isometric variation of a Jane Fonda. So normally when we're doing those Jane Fondas, those side-lying inductors, we're coming up and down like that. I've just been talking about pointing the toes down. This time you're gonna come up, make sure there's a surface behind you that you can push into. Up, and then push your heel back into that surface. Maybe you've got a wall or something you can use, don't mark it. And we're gonna push as hard as we can, pushing that heel back into that surface for five, four, three, two, one, and relax that leg. Up again, three, two, one, and push. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. Three, two, one, and push. One, four, five, and relax. One more time, three, two, one, and push. Four, five, awesome, change side. Make sure you've got a surface to push that heel in. Three, two, one, and up, and push. Three, four, five, good, and down. Three, two, one, up, and push. One, three, four, five, good, and relax. And again, three, two, one, and push. Four, five, and relax one more time. Three, two, one, and push. Four, five, excellent. I've noticed that one really has an immediate release on lots of the uh, dysfunction and the pain that occurs around that joint. Lying on your fronts now, we're gonna do some leg lifts. Very, very simple move. We're just gonna lift the leg up and I'm tensing my glutes as hard as possible in that position for five seconds and then dropping. So with me, three, two, one. One leg up and tense. Three, four, five, and relax. Same leg again. One, two, three, and up. One, two, three, four, five. Good, relax. And again, up. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. And up. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. One more time on this side, and up. One, two, three, four, five, awesome. Let's go to the right leg or the other leg, and up. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. You need to be thinking, really focusing on that glute. And up, four, Five, and relax, we've got two more. And up, three, four, five, and relax, awesome. And again, up, three, four, five, and relax, excellent. Up you come. We're gonna place one knee into the floor, send the other leg out, point the toes in the same way you're facing. All we're gonna do in this position, we've got that inside groin stretch, this runner's groin. I want you to send your hips back and up five times. Off we go. One, two, three, 
four, five. Good, let's change side. Leg goes out, make sure those toes point same way as your eyes, and back we go. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Back to the other side. And all we're going to do here, take a little wider stance. We're going to move to the side and back round. You'll notice my hips rotate ever so slightly as we do this. So one, two, three, four, five. We love a little bit of rotation whenever we're doing some mobility work, S and C work. It's a little wider stance this time. And rotate away and bring the hip round again. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Down on to your mat again. And this time we're gonna go 90-90s. So hopefully you can see that nice and clearly. I've formed an L shape with my back leg or my left leg and an L shape with my front leg or my right leg. So for my left leg here, so the inside of my leg is in contact with the floor. For my right side here, my outside of the leg is in contact with the floor. Make sure you're pulling those toes up towards you. Naturally, in this position, my body wants to fall over to the right hand side. So you're gonna keep your hand in place to keep yourself as tall as possible. And just here, all we're focusing on is lifting our torso into that position. You might find a little bit of discomfort in this left hip if you are, excellent. Discomfort is okay, meet the pain, never surpass it. Hold that position, five, four, three, two, one, then fold forwards, not out to the side, fold forwards here. Five, four, three, two, one and relax, good. Let's go to the other side. This is the move which I think you can actually spend loads of time in. It's gonna take you quite a while to get some soft tissue manipulation. So it's actually pauses of around two minutes in a position to start changing the tissue, but that might take a lot of time. Therefore, it'd be better to finish the entire circuit initially. So L shape with both legs, inside of my right leg, outside of my left leg this time. Use that arm to keep your torso tall, chest through. Make sure your toes are pointing up. That makes a big difference. Toes pointing away from you, much, much easier, less effective. Five, four, three, two, one. Fold forwards, not out to the side. Down we go. Three, two, one, and relax. Back to the first side. And what we're gonna do in, in this position, we're gonna stay tall. And all I want you to try and do is this outside leg, this right one's my inside, my left one's my outside. I'm gonna keep my foot in contact with the floor. And I'm gonna open that knee as much as I can and back down. This is my worst side, my weaker side. I don't get much elevation here. So 10 lifts with me now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Try not to rotate your hips to make it happen. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Great stuff. Let's go to the other side. That 90-90 position, chest up nice and tall. This right leg, knee up, off we go, 10 reps. One, two, it's a little bit better on this side, not much. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Awesome, okay. We're gonna move to a figure four stretch. Now loads of us know about the seated torso twist. That one there, hugging in and then rotating to get a glute stretch. The figure four is a little bit more intense and a lot more effective in my opinion. Cross your leg over, hands between the crease of your knee. And we're sending our arm through the middle of that crossed over leg. And then here, take a deep breath in. Exhale and pull that knee as close as you possibly can. We're gonna be here for 30 seconds. That's 10 seconds. Keep drawing that knee, focus on pulling. Really have intent in your stretches. That's 20. And that's 30, change leg. Cross the leg over, hand goes through the gap. Grab the crease of your knee, deep breath in. Exhale and pull nice and closely. That's halfway. Three, two, one, and relax. Roll forwards. This is our progression. If this is too much for you at this point, I would repeat the figure four stretch that we've just done. However, the pigeon pose really, really takes things up a notch. We're aiming to have this front leg parallel to our body. You will notice that this foot wants to go backwards. That's okay, that's a good starting point. We wanna get it as much up to parallel at a point and then send your leg behind you back, flatten the foot and we're trying to sink our hips down to the floor. So when I was really training, my hips now would be in, in contact with the floor. I'm tighter, I'm not as mobile, therefore it's actively lifting me up the floor. Your body will want to go towards the leg that's come forwards as well. So I want to shift over to the left, correct that, bring your right hip round so you are parallel. You're also wanting to tense up, so take a deep breath in, breathe out and try to relax. Hold it there, guys. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, forearms to the floor. You notice I've removed my block off that foot. Try to keep it in place. Forearms to the floor. Hold it here. Deep breath in. Exhale. Relax into it. Feel the stretch in your hip flexor. Five, four, three, two, one. Change side. Send that leg back, bring the other one through. We're gonna bring that foot up, help it up to parallel if we need to. Hand on the knee, hand on the foot to block. Chest nice and tall, deep breath in everyone. Exhale, sink to the floor. So stay relaxed. Three, two, one, forearms to the floor. Try not to let that foot slip back too far. Deep breath in, exhale. Five, four, three, two, one. Out we come. And we're gonna to move to the last move of the sequence, the sofa stretch. I like to use a, a cushion underneath my knee as I do this stretch. Basically, all we're gonna do is we're gonna bring one foot forwards like that, and the other foot is gonna go up onto a sofa behind you. 
The idea is that you get as close to that sofa as possible. Eventually, you'll be at 90 degrees. Some people can actually do this against a wall. Pretty impressive. In this position here, and all we're gonna do is drive that front knee forwards. Really feel that stretch. Hold it here. Five, four, three, two, one. Change side. Get as close to that sofa as possible. Front knee up. Hands on hips, push your hips forward slightly, drive that knee a little bit further over your toes. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. So there is a little sequence for you to do. If you're gonna go through three times, just rewind at this point. Otherwise, that is your minimum requirement for a little bit of glute and hips work. Best of luck, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit subscribe on the channel, and we'll be releasing lots of educational videos that will help you with your performance all the way through your training journey.